So um, let's select more than one image here. So this is just an example of two images up. We'll come up here to the layout style. So single image contact sheet, right? So this is a contact sheet. I'm saying put two images up. And what is this? An identity plate right down here. For my blog, I usually do nine up. All right, so that just gives me kind of a nice grid of nine images. Here I've got two up, but I've changed the background color to black. Here I've got, instead of a signature, I just have a little graphic logo. So again, that's using a watermark. Three panos, well, these images aren't going to look very good with panoramas, but that's okay. I'm going to um, deselect them all, and then I just want to drag this one there. But I think you can see, any time that you're printing specific sizes over and over again, you'll just make your templates. What is this, nine by eight grid? That's a lot of the same image. Um, three by three. Oh, so this one's, I forgot to mention this. So here we've got some additional data. So let's look at that. Now we're using the contact sheet layout style. But when we go down here to page, not only do I have the identity plate and the watermark, I've also got some page options. So first of all, if we've got multiple pages, I can do page numbers. We can also do page info, super handy. If you guys are doing test prints, what it does is right down there, which you can hardly see in the bottom left, is it actually tells you how much sharpening was applied, what, um, what basically what all your printer settings were. So do you have sharpening? What's your resolution? Uh, what was the printer profile that you used? So that's really handy. And then crop marks can be really handy if you are going to cut these up yourself. And then, Right down here, you can actually pull information from the metadata in the file. So let's go up here to layout for one second. And I'm just going to get rid of some of these rows and some of these columns so we can see it. No, we still can't see it any larger than that. Um, page setup, let's go the other direction. A little bit bigger? No, not really. Not that much bigger. How about with that? How about with that? I'm just trying to get a little bit. There we go. So now we can see sharpening. Um, the profile and the printer that you printed to. So that was controlled by this page area here, all right, by the page info. That toggles that on and off. We can maybe see the page number right there. Maybe not by the time it gets compressed. But then right here under custom settings, this is where we're pulling the information from the file. So if I wanted to add the file name underneath each one of my images, if I wanted to add something about maybe the EXIF data, right? So I want to say, all right, what are the dimensions of this file? We can insert that. Oops, it already did. We can delete that. Um, what else? Tons of information. You want to add your copyright underneath. We can insert that. If you've written captions, we can do that. You want to do your, um, your address, your keywords. We'll do keywords. I don't think I have that many here. All right, and we'll click Done. We could save that if you want to, but what I just wanted to show you was that it will actually add all of that information underneath every single document. So it's going to be different information. If you put like the camera ISO, it goes out and reads the metadata for each one of the files and reads the ISO for that file. So there's a ton of stuff that you can do with the print module. Um, and not only, I think, unfortunately, a lot of people go, yeah, well, I don't print my own stuff. I'm printing them to a lab or something. Yeah, but you could go in and you could create your own templates where you have overlapping images and stuff and not rely on your lab to do things like that. So because you can always print stuff to a JPEG. And I, like I said, I print all my stuff to, to my blog this way.